want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Hi, my name is Afra. Nice to meet you. Welcome to urdupod101.com's 3 minute mein Urdu, the fastest, easiest and most fun way to learn Urdu. In this series, you are going to learn basic Urdu expressions. It's super easy and it only takes 3 minutes. In this lesson, you are going to learn how to introduce yourself in Urdu. There are only two sentences you need to know. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Hi, my name is Afra. Nice to meet you. Start by saying Assalamu alaikum. Then say Mera naam, then your name and then say Hai. Please repeat after me. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam, your name, hai. Finally, say, aap se milkar khushi hui. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Together we have, assalamu alaikum. Mera naam, afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Let's take a closer look at the first sentence. First is the phrase, assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum in Urdu is equivalent to hello. Next is mera meaning my. This is a way to refer to yourself which can be used by both men and women. Next we have naam meaning name. Then you say your name and finally we have hai. Hai is attached to the end of the sentence and literally means to exist. In the first sentence We have the construction mera plus naam plus your name plus hai. The structure of simple Urdu sentences is different from English. In Urdu, the word order is subject, object, verb. The second sentence we have is aap se milkar khushi hui. Aap se milkar khushi hui can be used by both men and women. It means nice to meet you. It is used when meeting someone for the first time. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Again all together it is Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Aap se milkar khushi hui. Now it's time for Afra's advice. Pakistani people do generally shake hands with people of the same gender and often hug them as well. If you're unsure just say assalamu alaikum and shake hands with people of the same gender as you however in a business situation or with people from the opposite gender you might refrain from shaking hands in the last lesson you learned how to introduce yourself in urdu in this lesson you are going to learn how to use good manners when you thank people kya aap taiyar hain are you ready to chaliye shuru kare So let's begin. Saying thank you in Urdu is very easy. It's just one word. Shukriya. Shukriya. Shukriya means thank you. You can emphasize shukriya by adding bahut, which means very much. So it becomes bahut shukriya. Bahut shukriya. Thank you very much. So now you have learned how to say thank you in Urdu. But how will you reply if someone else says thank you to you? In Urdu, you are welcome is sometimes expressed as aapka khair muqaddam hai. Aapka khair muqaddam hai. You can also respond to someone who has thanked you by using another expression. This is koi baat nahi which literally means it's nothing koi baat nahi koi baat nahi so when someone says shukriya to you you can simply reply with koi baat nahi or aapka khair muqaddam hai now it's time for afra's advice 
Pakistanis do not always use the expressions for thank you and you are welcome in everyday situations. It is a concept literally translated from English. Native speakers often show politeness simply by using polite pronouns and verb forms while speaking. In the last lesson, you learned how to show gratitude to people by saying shukriya. In this lesson, you will learn some of the most common greetings used in Pakistan. Kya aap tayar hai? Are you ready? To chaliye shuru kare. So let's begin. Let's start with a greeting you are sure to have heard before. Assalamu alaikum. This is a phrase that is so closely associated with Pakistan and Islamic culture that it has become famous all over the world. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. The phrase Assalamu alaikum is actually Arabic for peace be on you. We use it as a formal as well as a friendly greeting. It's used when people meet at any time of the day, morning, noon, or evening. Use this and you will surely impress your Pakistani friends. In Urdu, using different greetings for each time of the day is not very common. When talking to friends, we usually just use the English phrases. But there are equivalent Urdu versions. They are just not used that often. If you meet someone before noon, you can say, Subha Bakhair. Subha Bakhair. For later in the day, you can say, Sham Bakhair. Sham Bakhair. But most of the time, you can just say, Assalamu Alaikum and not worry about it. Now let's move on to the expressions we use for saying goodbye in Urdu. A parting expression that we can use for all occasions is Phir milenge, which means see you. Phir milenge. Phir milenge. The first word Phir means again and the second word milenge means we will meet. Let's look at one more expression. Alvida. Alvida is an Urdu word which means farewell. Alvida. Alvida. It is an appropriate choice when parting for a long time or forever. Now it's time for Afra's advice. As we learned in this lesson, Assalamu Alaikum can be used at any time of the day. But this all around greeting is not just for saying hello, but for saying goodbye as well. It really is a very useful phrase and you should remember it by heart. In the last lesson, you learned the most common forms of greetings in Urdu. Do you remember them? In this lesson, you are going to learn a very useful phrase. Do you speak English? If you find yourself in a situation where you need assistance in English, this phrase can be a lifesaver. And because you are asking it in Urdu, you can be sure that everyone will understand what you are saying, even if their answer is no. Let's start with the formal expression. First though, take note that in Urdu, verbs change depending on the number and gender of the noun. So when asking a man if he speaks English, you would say, Kya aap angrezi bolte hain? Kya aap angrezi bolte hain? But to ask a woman if she speaks English, you would say, Kya aap angrezi bolti hain? Kya aap Angrezi bolti hai. Let's have a closer look. First, we have kya, a question marker which comes at the beginning of the sentence. Next is aap. This is the respectful word for you and is used in formal situations. You should always use it with people you don't know or with elders. Next, we have angrezi, which means English. Next is the verb. Bolte, meaning to speak. It is used when the subject is masculine. We use bolti when the subject is feminine. And finally, we have he. He is a sentence ending particle used with aap. Once more, when asking a man, it's kya aap angrezi bolte hai? And when asking a woman, kya aap angrezi bolti hai? Now let's make this sentence informal. First, we need to use the informal version of you 
which is tum. If we change the word for you, we will also change the sentence ending particle to ho. Everything else stays the same. When speaking to younger people, it's acceptable to use this informal form. In which case, you will say, Kya tum angrezi bolte ho? To ask a young man or a boy, Kya tum angrezi bolte ho? And when you're asking a young woman or a girl, you will say, Kya tum angrezi bolti ho? Kya tum angrezi bolti ho? The responses you will receive could be one of these three. Ha, yes. Ha, thodi bohat, a little. Thodi bohat, nahi. No, I don't. Nahi. Now let's review one more time. To ask a man in a formal situation if he speaks English, we would say, Kya aap angrezi bolte hai? And to ask a woman in a formal situation, we would say, Kya aap angrezi bolti hai? To ask a man in an informal situation, we would say, Kya tum angrezi bolte ho? And to ask a woman in an informal situation, we would say, Kya tum angrezi bolti ho? Now, it's time for Afra's advice. Pakistan was once for a long time part of the British Empire. And so today, English is one of the official languages of Pakistan. When visiting tourist areas, you are sure to meet many people who can communicate with you in English. Still, a large part of the population cannot understand English, and you can never go wrong knowing the local language. How do you say, I'm sorry, in Urdu? In the next lesson, we will learn ways to apologize. It's never too late to show your good manners with Pakistani people. I'll see you in our next lesson. Phir milenge. Want to get cheat sheets, audiobooks, lessons, apps, and much more every month for free? Just click the link in the description to get your free language gifts of the month. Assalamu alaikum. Mera naam Afra hai. Hi, my name is Afra. Welcome to urdupod101.com's 3 minute mein Urdu. The fastest, easiest, and most fun way to learn Urdu. In the last lesson, you learned the phrase, Kya aap angrezi bolte hain? Meaning, do you speak English? In this lesson, you are going to learn how to apologize in Urdu. There are a number of ways to apologize, but in a formal situation, you should use maaf kijiye. Maaf kijiye. The first word maaf literally means forgive. And kijiye is a polite form of the word meaning please do. So this expression actually means something like forgive me please. Now let's hear it again. Maaf kijiye. Maaf kijiye is used in formal situations when you are communicating with someone you have met for the first time, with elders and usually also when communicating with women. It is not used among friends or people who are informal with each other. The informal way to say I am sorry is maaf karo. Maaf karo. Let's review. Maaf kijiye is the formal way to say I am sorry or excuse me. Maaf karo is the informal way to say I am sorry or excuse me. These are all versatile phrases with a few different meanings depending on the situation. Whether you are trying to get someone's attention for a question or making your way through a crowded area or apologizing for stepping on someone's foot, these are all phrases you could use. Now imagine someone says maaf kijiye to you after having done something wrong. How would you respond? In this case, the proper phrase is koi baat nahi. Koi baat nahi. This means something like, it doesn't matter, koi baat nahi. You might remember this phrase from lesson 2. It is the same phrase you can use when responding to someone thanking you. Now it's time for Afra's advice. If someone bumps into you on the streets in Pakistan, don't expect an excuse me, especially in the big cities. Pakistanis are usually very friendly people, but just don't consider excusing themselves for bumping into someone as time well spent. Big crowds are very common in big cities, 
unless someone pushes you over so hard you fell on the ground, keep walking. In the last lesson, you learned some words used when apologizing in Urdu, including maaf kijiye. In this lesson, you are going to learn numbers in Urdu. Yes, numbers. Tadad. From 1 to 10. And you are going to learn them in only 3 minutes. Teen minute. Are you ready? Let's start. Ek. Ek. Do. Do. Teen. Teen. Char. Char. Punch, punch, che, che, sat, sat, art, art, no, no, thus, thus. Okay, now repeat after me. I will say the numbers and give you time to repeat each one. Ek, do, teen, char, panch, che, saat, aat, no, das. Great job. What is before ek? Do you know? It's zero, of course, which in Urdu is sifar. Sifar. Now you don't have any more excuses. You can give your friends your cell phone number in Urdu. Let's try it together. To say my phone number is in Urdu, first say the phrase mera phone number then say your cell phone number and finally say hai. Mera phone number. Your phone number hai. For example, mera phone number no sifar do panch panch saat do do char art hai. Can you understand it by yourself? No sifar do, panch panch saat, do do char, art. Perfect. Now it's time for Afra's advice. Did you know that in Urdu, numbers have their own script that is similar to the Hindu Arabic numeral system? Yes, that's right. They don't look like the numbers we are used to seeing in the Western world. But with just a little more effort, you can not only say the numbers in Urdu, you'll be able to read them as well. Do you know the Urdu word for a hundred? In the next lesson, you are going to learn the numbers from 11 to 100 in Urdu. In the last lesson, we learned the numbers from 1 to 10. Do you remember them? Just in case you have forgotten, I'll tell you again. Ek, do, teen, char. Panch, che, saat, art, no, thus. And now let's continue from eleven. Gyara, gyara, bara, bara, tera, tera, choda, choda, pandra. Pandra Sola So La Satra Sat Ra Atara Atara Unnis Unnis Urdu numbers from 1 to 100 are quite irregular with no definite pattern. So the only way to learn them is to memorize them. It might seem daunting at first, but you will soon recognize a rough pattern. Now, here are the rest of the tens. Bees. Bees. Tees. Tees. Chalice. 
चालीस पचास पचास साठ साठ सत्तर सत्तर अस्सी अस्सी नब्बे नब्बे While you have to memorize many of the numbers there is a trick that will make memorizing them easy notice that 30 is 30 and 40 is 40 do you remember what 3 and 4 are in urdu well let me remind you 3 is 3 and 4 is 4 as you can see the sound t of 3 which is 3 is used in 30 or 30 3 Tis. Similarly, the sound cha in char, which is four, is used in chalis or forty. Char, chalis. Do you see other similarities? Five in Urdu is panch, while fifty is pachas. The common sound is pa. Unfortunately, this does not apply to all numbers. Sixty in Urdu is saat. while 6 is 6 as you can see there is no common sound the last thing to learn in this lesson is how to form compound numbers above 20 you already know that the number patterns in urdu are quite irregular so you might be wondering if you have to memorize each and every compound number the answer is yes you do however we are going to make your life a little bit easier with this brilliant tip For any number between 20 and 99 you will say a variation of the numbers 1 to 9 followed by the tens let's try it out How would you say 34 in Urdu You first say a variation of 4 followed by a variation of 30 So 34 is literally read as 430 which is 34 Here 4 is a variation of the number 4 or 4 and tees is a variation of 30 john tees 61 is iksat which is literally read as 160 ik is a variation of ek for 1 while sat is a variation of saat for 60 ik sat let's look at one more number 95 in urdu it is 95 which is literally read as 590 pacha is a variation of panch for 5 and navve is a variation of navve for 90 pachanave now it's time for afra's advice did you get until number 99 here is another number you might want to know so so that's 100 in urdu Congratulations now you are able to count to 100 in Urdu in the next lesson we are going to put your number knowledge to use do you have all the skills you need to go shopping in Pakistan if not i'll be waiting for you in our next 3 minute mein urdu lesson phir milenge in the last lesson you learned how to count in urdu i hope you spent some time practicing the numbers because they will come in handy in this lesson You are going to learn how to go shopping in Pakistan. Before we go, you need to know how to say how much is this? Iska daam kya hai? Iska daam kya hai? Are you ready to go shopping in Pakistan? Let's go. You see something you like and want to ask the shopkeeper how much it costs. The first thing to say to a shopkeeper is Maaf kijiye. Do you remember what that means? Excuse me. Maaf kijiye. Iska daam kya hai? Excuse me. How much is this? Maaf kijiye. Iska daam kya hai? If you want to be more specific when asking how much is this and refer to a certain type of object You just need to insert the object in between the word iska between is and ka. Let's see an example. 
Suppose you want to buy a hat in the market. Hat in Urdu is topi. So, how much is this hat? In Urdu is, is topi ka daam kya hai? Is topi ka daam kya hai? But what if you want to buy several things? Then you would have to use a new word, inka, which means these. Excuse me, how much are these? In Urdu is, maaf ki jiye, inka daam kya hai? Maaf ki jiye, inka daam kya hai? At this point, the shop clerk can answer by saying, iska daam, the price, then hai. Or, ye, the price, then ka hai. For example, iska daam pachas rupay hai. Ye pachas rupay ka hai. What number is pachas? I'm not telling you. Okay, okay, it's 50. So, altogether, this means it costs 50 rupees. Now, it's time for Afra's advice. Another very common way of asking how much is it is, ye kitne ka hai? And if you want to be more specific and mention the thing you want to know the price of, all you need to do is insert the object after ye. Ye seb kitne ka hai? Which means, how much is this apple? At this point, can you count rupees in Urdu? We are going to learn how to do this and much more in the next lesson. I'll be waiting for you in our next 3 Minute Me Urdu lesson. Phir milenge.